and welcome to another exciting podcast from Living Faith Church. It's our hope and prayer that today's message will bring you closer and deeper to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here is our lead pastor, Pastor Dean Hackett. Lord, speak to us today your message. Lord, I'm asking in the authority of Jesus' name that you, by your Holy Spirit, will quicken our hearts to faith, and that by your Holy Spirit, your word will be life to us today. You have promised that your word is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, let your word be that to our hearts today. In Jesus' mighty name, empower me to speak your word, and I give you praise. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. You know, it's interesting because from the very first prophecies about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is this consistent dual prophecy about both the present and the eternal. Both the present and the eternal. Look with me at Isaiah chapter 9 and the passage that the prophet Isaiah gave. Would you read it with me together, everyone? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Did you catch it there? Did you catch it? There's going to be a baby born, and he's going to rule on the throne of King David here on earth, but he's not only going to be wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, but he is going to be over a kingdom forever, forever, to establish it with justice and judgment from that time forward, even forever. There's this connection of the present and the eternal. We see it also in Gabriel's message to Mary when he came and said to her, hey, you're going to have a baby. And she's going, oh, wait a minute. How's that possible? I've never had a man. Listen to what the angel Gabriel said to her. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one, that the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and his name shall Jesus, excuse me, you shall call his name Jesus, he will be great and will be called called the son of the highest, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David, Watch this. Keep going. Oh, no. You left out the forever. He was going to set upon the throne forever. And of his kingdom, he said, there will be no end. He will sit upon his throne forever. We're seeing that parallel again of the present and the eternal. But it's not just regarding Jesus in Scripture that we see this dualism. When we look at scripture about the disciples of Jesus, it also carries that dualism. Jesus said when Nicodemus came to him one night, a Pharisee, one of the leading Pharisees, came to Jesus and said, Lord, you know, we know you're sent from God. Jesus said, you got to be born again. And he has this conversation with Nicodemus. And then Jesus said these words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. life. 
But Jesus also said to the Pharisees, a number of Pharisees, that came to him and asked him, so when will we see the kingdom of God? And Jesus said this. He said, the kingdom of God will not come with observation. Or you will not say, see here or see there. Listen, for the kingdom of God is within you. And so Jesus made it really, really clear that the kingdom of God is within the hearts of men and women in the everyday, present, living, the stuff of life. But also, in living that, the disciple of Jesus Christ understands there's this constant perspective of the eternal kingdom, that life here is temporal, that life here is only for a season because we have that hope of eternal life with Jesus Christ in the eternal kingdom. And there's that constant tension, amen, of living now, but living now with the, I'm headed there. Now, learning, learning to live effectively and successfully that constant tension between living life here and now with the perspective of the eternal, that constant is a part of our spiritual growing and maturing, being able to live that dualism. How is that possible? Well, I I don't know about you, but myself and everyone I've ever known This world has a really strong pull to it. It's it's like we're tethered to this world even though we love Jesus. And that tethering happens through our physical senses. The senses that we have that are sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. Look at this diagram that will help us. Okay, the red is our body, it's our flesh where we have sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad we have that? Because these five senses help us live and enjoy God's creation. God designed us with those five senses so we could enjoy his creation. I am really thankful that I can see and smell my roses in the spring and summer and early fall. I love that. I also love it that I can walk by the Safeway Bakery and enjoy that fragrance without gaining any calories or weight. (laughs) It's when we go from the smell and sight to the taste and the touch that the bakery becomes a problem. (laughs) But God gave us these five senses to live in enjoy his creation. But look, in our soul, that's the yellow area, we have our mind, our will, our emotions. That is so we can live in relationship with other human beings. That gives us personality, right? And there are a lot of people that study poise and personality, and they come out with a poison personality. (laughs) Because they forget it's not all about them God gave us a soul so we could live in relationship with others and it could be about them. Amen. Little thought there you might want to chew on. The, uh, and then the blue area is our spirit, our, our conscience, our God awareness, and our spiritual senses. That's to help us live in relationship with Almighty God himself. Amen? Amen. What keeps us tethered so tight to the world are these five senses interacting with our mind, will, and emotions that keep us here and keep us pulled here. And we're focused here. When our sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing dominates our thinking all day long, dominates our emotions, 
and it keeps us tethered to this world and we live for this world more than we live for Almighty God, that is when we get into trouble. See, that's the power of addiction. That's the power of addiction. Whether And, and there's, there's multiple addictions. Not just alcohol, narcotics, but there, I mean, there are myriad of addictions that keep us tightly tethered to living in this world and living for here only and not living for Almighty God. Amen. Mm. Amen, Pastor, this is really good. And that's why, that's why we have to learn. Listen, listen let, let me share something with you. Food, fishing, hunting, golf, especially golf. <laughs> <laughs> Companionship. Enjoying the love relationship. None of those things of themselves are sin. They only become sin when we take those things outside the concept and realm that Almighty God placed them, when it becomes immoral, when it becomes fornication or adultery, when it becomes immoral, when we take those things and they become immoral, or when we place those things ahead of God, when our recreation becomes ahead of God, we don't have time for God because we're so busy with our recreation. Our, our focus, our thoughts, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is on those things, then that places them as our God, and Almighty God is left behind. And God said, don't have any other gods before me. Come on, amen? amen. That's when these things become a problem, when we are so tethered to the world that the world becomes our God and becomes what we worship and we think about day after day after day. That is when it becomes a problem, when we can stand and give a cheer for our football team, but we don't have time to go to the house of God and stand and give a cheer to Almighty God. That's why we have to learn the Romans 12 principle. The Romans 12 principle goes this way. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may show forth or prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, that, that is the key for a disciple of Jesus Christ, being able to live successfully that constant tension between the present and the now and the eternal so that we're able to live the present and the now because we're supposed to. We're supposed to. We're supposed to Amen. live the present and the now. We're supposed to. Amen. But we're supposed to do it with the full awareness that we're living in the eternal. The kingdom of God is within us. So we're not just living here and now. Here and now, we're also living the eternal kingdom. Amen. And how we do that is we present our body a living sacrifice to Almighty God. So I give God my sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. And I say, God, may it be holy and sanctified and pleasing for you. Amen. How I use my five senses. Lord, I give you my mind, my will, and my emotions. That almighty God, my attitude, my emotions, my actions will please and honor and glorify you. Amen. So that whether I'm playing on the, with the rugrats and rolling with them and having fun with them or I'm spending personal time with my bride and I'm on a special date with her, or whether I'm at work and I'm taking care of stuff at work, no matter what I'm doing, 
my attitude, and all of my behavior is pleasing to Almighty God. My actions are pleasing to Almighty God. My speech is pleasing to Almighty God. My thoughts and my attitudes are pleasing to Almighty God. I am living in that constant tension that while I'm living here in this life, in this world, doing stuff here that has to be done, I am living with an eternal perspective continually because I want my life to be pleasing to Almighty God. I live with that tension. I live with that continual tension. And it doesn't make me sour and like a dill pickle. There are some, there are some Christians... You, you, you look at them and you go, man, when you got baptized, instead of getting baptized in water, did you get baptized in sour juice or something? Because for them, living the Christian life is, and it's like they can't enjoy life. Put joy in your heart. Come on, amen? amen. Put joy in your heart. The fruit of the Spirit is not Criticalness, judgmental, hatefulness, and meanness. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. How many know, say it with me, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Oh, wait a minute. What was that second one? Joy. What was it? Joy. Notify your face. <laughs> Come on. Let's say it again. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Gentleness. Oh, and goodness and faithfulness and meekness and temperance. Amen? Amen. Self-control. See, Almighty God wants us to have that continual tension so that as we're living life, hey, it's okay. Enjoy, enjoy your recreation. I, I, I am so thankful that God gave us the ability to enjoy his creation. I, that's one of the reasons I love golf, is you're playing on green stuff. <laughs> on a nice warm day. Hey, the last time I played golf, December 1st, here in Hermiston, in shorts, in a t-shirt, 70 degree weather. Right, Paul? It was amazing. I had to take a picture of it because I wanted to remember that because it had never happened before. It may never happen again. <laughs> so cool. But listen, there are some of you, for you, it's walking in the woods with a knot six across your arm. <laughs> yeah. Chasing Bambi's daddy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I did that for years. It was fun. Uh, I loved archery more than rifle because... The, the challenge for me was I love being out in the woods and sneaking and being as quiet as you could and getting as close to the animal as you could, right? Oh, so fun. Even if I didn't get to flip an arrow, just getting that close and seeing them was awesome, right? Yeah. yeah. And he says, see, God wants us to enjoy his creation. He wants us to enjoy our work. He wants us to enjoy our human relationships. We're created for that. But not to the point that we forget we are eternal beings. And the ultimate relationship is with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we get to spend eternity. How long is eternity? Longer than you can imagine. When we have been there a thousand years, we just started. It's incredible. And we get to spend that with one another and with the one that loves us the most. Amen. Amen. But see, there's a, there's a real danger creeping in that bothers me. And, and I'm, I'm really concerned about this that's creeping into the Christian community. And, and it is, it is a, a disregard and, and at times, a disrespect of the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
And, and they call it things like helicopter theology or escapism and stuff. Listen, it's none of that. It's a promise from God's word. Amen. Jesus promised there's going to come a seven-year time frame that is going to lead to Jesus Christ 1,000-year reign here on earth. But that seven years is going to be the time when he is going to judge the nations for how they have treated God's chosen people, the Jewish people, and how they've treated God's church, the disciples of Jesus Christ. And he's going to judge the nations for that. And it's going to be seven years of absolute, literal hell on earth. It's going to be times when a fourth of the earth is going to be burned up. I mean, it's just, it's just going to be an awful, awful time. But Jesus promised, you're not appointed to wrath. You're not appointed to experience that judgment. He has promised you and I that, look, I am going to come a second time, and there's going to be two parts to my second coming. The first part is I'm going to appear in the clouds, in the sky, and all of those who are my authentic disciples, I'm going to raise them off the earth, and they're going to meet me in the sky, and we're going to go spend seven years celebrating. Because while the seven years on earth is hell on earth, seven years in heaven is going to be celebrating the marriage supper of the Lamb. And that is where you and I are going to get our rewards. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Man, that's not, that's not escapism. That is awesome. Amen. That's kind of like saying to the bride and groom, would you stop being so happy about your wedding? Forget it. You're just, you're, 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 you're just being annoying right now. No, no, we expect them to be, amen? amen? Yeah, come on. We should be looking forward to that time. But here's what I hear. Here's what I hear. Well, but, but pastor, you know, I've got my career, and I want to have my career. Pastor, I want to finish my education. Pastor, look, I'm engaged, and I want to, I want to get married. Pastor, I, I, I want to have children. And, and look, absolutely. Jesus tells us to look forward to all of those things. You don't, you don't stop looking forward to all of those things. You don't stop trying to be the excellent craftsman that God wants you to be. In fact, Jesus said, while you're looking for my coming, occupy till I come. In other words, keep yourself busy. Keep being a craftsman. Keep doing excellence. Keep living life. Keep raising those kids. Keep having kids. Come on. Amen. Keep being grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Don't stop any of that stuff. Keep doing it with love, joy, and peace. But while you're doing it, keep an eye on the sky. Because <laughs> I'm coming soon. Amen. See, you live with that tension. Instead of resenting it, instead of disregarding it, instead of disrespecting it, the scripture actually says we should love his appearing. Look forward to his appearing. And so I do my job with excellence. I work to be a craftsman, not just get a job done. Okay, put a pause right there. This is extra, no charge. Don't just show up on the job, would you please? Yes. Your boss needs more than a warm, breathing body. Yes. He needs you to show up mentally, emotionally, physically ready to give him a good day's work for a day's pay. Yes. Come on, amen? Yes. I'm saying that because Jesus commanded it. Okay, end. Now we get to go back with the message again. That was extra. Just a little encouragement. By the way, when we're living with this tension, how do we do that? How do we, how do we make that happen effectively? It's the Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 principle. Look at it with me, would you please? Read it with me. 
Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he's saying, look, you're running this race and you're in this world and this world is going to have things that will try and knock you off course, try and distract you, try and slow you down, try and keep you from running. But listen, you've got, you've got, a, whole, you've got a whole grandstand of people that are cheering you on. I want you to understand right now, all the saints that have passed and gone on before us, they are in heaven and they are watching. They are cheering us on and they are saying to you and I, if somehow God were to pull back the curtain and we could hear those saints in heaven, they would be saying, come on, come on, come on. This is the greatest thing in all the world. Whatever you do, don't miss heaven. Whatever you do, don't miss heaven. But don't just barely get here. Don't just barely fall over the line into eternity. Come on, run the race. Run the race with everything you have. Come on, give it everything you've got. Come on, everything you've got. Come on, come on, you can win this race. Come on, you can win this race. Come on, you can win this race. They're cheering us on. And Almighty God says to you and I, whatever you do, whatever you do as you're running this race, all of that stuff that would hinder, all that stuff that would distract, all that stuff that would slow you down, just throw it aside. Just throw it aside and keep your eye fixed clearly on Jesus. Amen. Because every one of us is going to go through stuff we're going to go through car wrecks. We're going to go through natural disasters. We're going to go through health issues. We're going to go through tragedies. We're going to have loved ones that will pass away way too early. We're going to, we're going to go through having a mate that will not remain faithful to you. We're going to go through all kinds of junk. We'll have people on the job that will lie about us, that will treat us disrespectfully. We're going to have employers that will not treat us correctly. We're, we're just going to go through life. How many know all of that is stuff is of life? Because we live in a fallen world, and because Satan is the ruler and the principality and power of this world, we're going to go through stuff. And because we're sons and daughters of Almighty God, and because we want to be authentic disciples of Jesus Christ, we're going to go through it even more. He's going to fight us even harder. And so what do we do? We keep our eye on Jesus because Jesus, who for the, listen, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And sat down at the right hand of Almighty God. That's our key. We keep our eye on Jesus and we remember. Maybe I'm going through a health issue right now. Maybe I'm going through a, a struggle in my marriage relationship right now. Maybe I'm going through a hassle right now. Maybe I'm trying to conquer an addiction right now. Maybe I am dealing with resentment right now. Maybe I'm dealing with a hurt and a wound right now. Maybe, maybe I'm going through this stuff. But listen, Jesus eternity is right there. I'm on the edge of eternity and you want me to learn the lesson and you want me to walk victorious and you want this that I'm going through just to shape me more like you. Amen. And Jesus, I presented my body to you a living sacrifice. And so Jesus, just this stuff I'm going through, just let it be the pressure that causes my coal to become diamonds. 
that causes the gold in me to become refined, more pure, that causes my life to have a greater reflection of Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on you, Jesus, and I'm going to find joy even in this. Wow, that was a big amen right there. Yeah, it, it, and I understood that. This, this is not easy. But it is the greatest spiritual lesson you can learn. That you don't let the stuff of this world determine your attitude or your altitude. You want to hear it again? You don't let the stuff of this world determine your attitude or your altitude. Amen. It wants to. You're so tethered to this world. It will try. It's going to try. It's going to try. It's going to try. It's going to try and make you bitter. It's going to try and make you resentful. It's going to try and make you angry. It's going to try and make you resentful. It's going to try and make you feel hopeless. Listen, it's going to try and make you live like a victim. And Almighty God says, I don't have any victims in my kingdom. They're all victorious. Because in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. But this world's going to try and shape you. Come on, right? Not on my watch, right? That's got to be your attitude. Not on my watch. I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. I got Jesus. And he, now listen, I'm going to wrap up with this. The most beautiful thing is when you have your eyes on Jesus, suddenly you discover his eyes are on you. Amen. When, you when you keep your eyes on Jesus, you discover his eyes are on you, and they never look elsewhere. The promise is the eyes of the Lord are ever going to and fro across the earth, looking for the righteous ones to whom he can show himself mighty. So the more I keep my eyes on him, the more I know he's seeing me, and he knows my situation. This is why such a key element is building in our life the fear of the Lord. What's the fear of the Lord? Well, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and every wicked way. She put it up on the screen for us. Read it with me, would you? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. That's the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is learning to hate those things God hates. And so to know what God hates, it's really good to learn what Proverbs chapter 6 says when it says seven things, or six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. Good idea to go learn what those seven things are. And if they're in your life, you might want to get rid of them, you know? Because he wants us to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Come on, amen? amen? But the fear of the Lord. See, the fear of the Lord gets a bad rap. We think it's, it's cowering and, oh, God, don't hit me again. Oh, God. No, that's not, that's not what it is. The fear of the Lord actually has its root in love. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say keep my commandments out of fear and afraid you're going to go to hell. Keep my commandments because you love me so much. You're running after me and you love the things I love and you hate the things I hate. The fear of the Lord. It's, a, it's rooted, the fear of the Lord's rooted in love. I love you so much, Jesus. I love what you love. I hate what you hate. And here's another, here's another, same, the other side of the same coin, fear of the Lord is that I know God sees everything I do, knows everything I say. He's always watching me. Remember, his eyes are always on us, so he's always, he always sees. 
This is just tuck this away a little. Just, this is just tuck this away. You can't keep a secret from God. Amen. One of the things I told my kids when they were growing up, and I'd remind them when Juan and I were going to be away <clears throat> look, when we're not around, God sees. And God tells. <laughs> and I talk to him all the time. I wanted them to have that fear of the Lord in them, knowing. You know, he's just, it, Psalms. Do we have that Psalms 139? Did we put that on the scripture also? It was up there a moment ago? Yeah. Okay. Let's get it back up there again. Psalm 139. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Read, read it with me. Oh, Lord, you've searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. That's a scary thought. Here we go. Ready? For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. The, the, the writer is saying, God, it's crazy. You know everything about me all the time. You know my attitude. You know what I'm about to say. You know those times when I'm going, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. And you know it. And you're whispering in my heart, you can't afford. Don't give it away. <laughs> it's just all the time. He knows. And he sees and he hears. He knows. He sees and he hears. All the time, you're never out of his sight. And because of that, God, though I'm tethered in this world, I live my life to please you more than to please this world. Amen. I live to please you more than I want to please anyone in this world. I live for you, Lord. And that's that tension between the present and and the eternal that we live every day as a disciple. We are so blessed that you join us online today. For more resources on how you can grow your relationship with Jesus Christ, visit us online at www.winacity.com. If you would like to speak with someone about your relationship with Jesus Christ or would like prayer, you can contact us at 541-567-4486 or email us at info at winacity.com.